hi, I'm Chantelle from Major at Archive. First of all, thank you to Notum, Chris, and Sarah for putting uh, this panel together. Um, I realize I'm the first here to focus on the modern and the contemporary cultures, which brings into light the role of the archive of contemporary art in defining what becomes heritage and how we can, or what it means to intervene in what Susan calls the serendipity of history. And so as you can see, the archive as method. This is not so much a title, but a proposition, or maybe a question to keep in mind as I go through the presentation. Perhaps it's a way to complicate all the things we are meant to be, to complicate Asia, to complicate, uh, the, complicate art, complicate the archive by putting them in confrontation with one another. It's an idea that we at AAA are still working through. Today, one hears of the archive in increasingly generic term, from online archives, including newspapers, to blog entries, to a variety of databases, and actual online digitized archives. For many, the archive is no longer thought of in its conventional, dusty basement, stacked high with documents protected by a gatekeeper form. There does seem to be a widespread notion of an increasing interest in the archive. This has been visibly visible globally within the arts. A has participated in forums, including Speak Memory, a conference in Cairo in 2010, exploring the rich array of methodologies that can be adopted to unearth, revisit, or reactivate past artistic practices. In Asia, we're in discussion with colleagues from the Indonesia Visual Art Archive, founded in 1999, and the Oral History Archives of Japanese Art, amongst others. And recently, we've been contacted increasingly for practical advice by organizations and individuals interested in setting up art archives in Asia. So what does it mean? So what is it about the archive that is inciting people or organizations? What options or possibility does the archive seem to promise? Attempts have been made in the past to define the archive. This includes Fe Foucault's famous position that the archive is not only the traces left behind by history, but is history a priori. In other words, the archive is not just a collection of texts that define a culture, nor even a set of institutions that preserve texts. This, the archive is the law of what can be said. In my eyes, and I know some of the archivists in this room might disagree with me, what is more exciting about the archive is that the archive is a system that can fundamentally alter and evolve. Its ontological structure continuously adapts and finds new forms which, with which to respond to its environment. Archival theorist John Reidner argues that these changes are based on three contexts, historiography, paradigm, and technology. And I would add to that localities. A recent shift in archival theory is the envisioning of an object's life beyond the structure of the archive. The archive has evolved into a multifunctional and interdisciplinary situation, no longer fashioned as a space for accumulation, but as a platform and catalyst that enables the co-creations of meanings and experiences, and where knowledge is envisioned as a latently intersubjective process. This challenges Foucault's argument then. The archive is no longer a priori, but it is always in a state of flux. It becomes a catalyst for conversations. It does openness. In the age of the World Wide Web, everybody is a producer, and almost any kind of information is retrievable. How does that make us rethink ownership? At AA, we believe that the solution is in the multiple. Multiplicity and provenance, in the case of an art archive like us, these are the narratives and records by the artist or the original archive owner. Multiple archivists, where the practice of archiving is a collective and collaborative project, from researcher to annotator, and multiple to the point of excess of researchers, students, artists, curators, cultural workers, and social historians, and much more, where the material and the records are interpreted, exhibited, written, debated, countered, enriched, and so on and so forth with the aim of socializing the material beyond A's immediate networks. These three layers form new networks and forms of association, which are necessary for the effective redistribution of knowledge production. Rather than try to define what an archive is or should look like, I propose to look at three models that are re-envisioning the archive as a method to challenge the dominance of narratives. Focusing predominantly on AA, because that's the one I know best, I will outline the way in which the multiple is part of A's operating mechanism. From the team, the research, and the archiving process, to the dissemination of the records. I will end the presentation by casting a light on the work of arg.org and Southern Conceptualism's network. 
Let me first introduce you to, to you AAA. For those of you who don't know us, we're a nonprofit, a non-governmental organization based here in Hong Kong. And so I, you know, um, would like to invite you to visit us <laughs> in Shanghuan. Uh, we're dedicated to archiving and documenting recent developments in visual arts in Asia. Um, and this is what it looks like, or this is what it looked like. A was founded in 2000 by Claire Su and Johnson Chang. Claire, who remains the executive director today, set up the organization in response to the urgent need to document and secure the multiple recent histories of contemporary art in the region, something that very few organizations were doing at the same time. The aim was also to counterbalance the forces of the, mar of the art market in Asia. So she set off with the vision of making information on contemporary art from Asia as accessible as possible for wide research. Our first space opened to the public in 2003 with three bookshelves and a modest office come public program space. We outgrew it by 2007 when we moved to our current space. Nearly three times the size was twice the library size, a specially designated climate control room for, for closed stacks and a space for programs separate from the offices. Yet, 30, with 34,000 books on our shelves, not counting the hundreds of thousands of digitized primary source materials, a team of 34 local and overseas staff, and over 20 projects running at the same time, we are quickly outgrowing this space as well. This is AAA's working structure. The library team deals with the deliver, delivering of the material into the public realm, both through the physical space and online. We have the research team that with the input from the library, the director and myself developed the framework of the organization and the scope of the collection. The program team, which includes the public programs and education department, works hand in hand with research to develop cohesive programs extending from our research to develop a dialogue with audiences with varying degrees of specialization. The researchers are individuals based in cities across Asia who act as the eyes, ears and faces of AA on the ground. They build up networks and collaborations. They attend and document events and exhibitions. They collate and digitize material and send it back to the Hong Kong office to be cataloged and redisseminated. The research projects AAA are predominantly researcher driven. This means that AAA relies a great deal on the judgment of these individuals. And that in accordance with the scope and framework delineated by AAA, develop research projects and work with us to better understand the context of their location and the role that AAA can play within it. Today, our research team is made up of 11 researchers across Asia, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, and India, and a head of research and programs that helps to ensure the cohesion and coordination of the various strands of research. The collection strategy has, over the last four to five years, been readjusting from one primarily based on accumulation and large picture surveying, acquiring publications framed mainly by geography to one that prioritized in-depth and denser pockets of thematic research in digital format. The strategy aims to highlight significant bodies of material that can act as entry points to inflect on other related practices, ideas, conditions, and people as a way to unravel onto a constellation of activities. This is guided by three main strategies, pioneer organizations, looking at organizations that have played an important role in housing or facilitating the development of visual arts in their locations, the second is significant individuals. We are simultaneously working on a number of individual archives. We recently completed the digitization of imminent art critic and curator Gita Kapoor and her partner, an artist, Vivan Sundaram's archives. We're pre we've preserved 50 years worth of documentation, brought to light uh, over 140 names of artists. This archive records the shifting of paradigms both in India and of India in relation to the world over a period of half of a century. The third strategy is a thematic, which includes our largest project to date on the 1980s in China, bringing to surface over 100,000 di digitized items, largely from the archives of artists Ma Shuhui, Zhang Xiaogang, Wu Shanzhuan, Zhang Peili, and curator Fei Dawei. This four-year research project led to the production of over 75 in-depth interviews with active figures from the time who enriched the contextualized the con uh, who enriched and contextualized the situations in China in the 1980s. We are still in the midst of providing metadata for all these records for its access on the website. We are also currently working on a large-scale performance art initiative, tracing the development of the media 
in, the, in Asia, considering its rich geo, uh, regional history. One of the features of the initiative is Frog King's 1,500 slides and photographs. For those of you who don't know Frog King, he is a pioneering performance artist from Hong Kong who has been practicing since the 1970s. His documentary photos and videos provide significant evidence of his own work, but also the scenes in Hong Kong and New York dating back from the 1960s. He was also the representative of Hong Kong at the, at the pavilion in the last finest biennial. I won't go into this now, but the issues around digitization of performance documentation, authorship and copyright is latent in our practice and something that we are grappling with. Let me also take this opportunity to clarify our action vis-a-vis -vis ownership. A's stand is that we do not in insist on keeping the original material. Instead, we believe in preservation through digitization. This is also the medium that fa facilitates access and dissemination most efficiently. By reducing the power associated to ownership, the object of cultural patrimony is liberated to form unlimited narrative associations. Our biggest anxiety at AA is for this material and its contents, which we've made huge efforts to bring together, to stay hidden, untouched, inactive in our space. And a large part of our answer is in our website. And so we launched AA's new website in June. Our former website was useful as a bi bibliographic tool, but the rec records could only be accessed from our physical space in Hong Kong. Acknowledging that very few people could actually make it to our physical space in Hong Kong, this new platform, which took four years and an internal IT team to construct, brings AA's collection into the public realm. Now things can be viewed piece by piece, manuscripts, photographs, correspondences, slides, for instance, you can browse according to the proposed tree structure. Um, the structure is not standardized, but each is developed in conversation with the donors of the original archive, either to keep the original archive's integrity, so keeping as closely to the original structure of the archive as possible, or to suggest an alternative narrative legibility. With Gita and Vivan's structure, it's divided into four parts, as you can see. Essays and lectures, curatorial work. Vivan as organizer, which is further subdivided, subdivided into the organizations which he co-founded. Kasali Art Center, perhaps the first artist-led international artist residency in India, and Samat, and Vivan's artistic career. By contrast, you'll see that Zhang Xiaogang, one of China's most recognizable names today, uh, from the generation of the 1980s, is structured chronologically, following the development of his artistic practice from the 1980s onwards. These are a few images from the 1980s period of his work. Alternatively, the website and the collections can interact and enter into dialogue with other parts of the website via our search, including the recordings of our programs, which are now viewable from our website, our rich database of relevant events from around the world, uh, the writings produced of our, out of our former newsletter and our new e-journal field notes, as well as our physical library of over 34,000 publications. All of these are now intersearchable across the site. For instance, if you search ink, you'll be presented with the paintings of Zhang Xiaogang, Vivan Sundaram's drawings, and the collages of Roberta Chabet, displaying the rich contemporary explorations of the medium. If you type in 1980s, you will find photographs documenting the activities of artists, architects, playwrights, whose lives intersected via the Kosali Art Center in North India, founded by Vivan. Converging with the manuscripts of Hong Kong art critic Nigel Cameron, who was active from 1970 to 2000, the experimentations of ink painter Wu Guangzong, as well as the catalogs from a range of exhibitions in the 1980s, uh, including the Fukuoka Triennial, one of two art festivals dedicated to the mapping of practice of Asian artists. And this is extremely exciting to us because it is this kind of technology that enables a comparative perspective on spaces, times, people, practice, forms, concept, etc. It allows us to see what kind of visual languages were active where, and where practices were being uh, included in large-scale large exhibitions like the Fukuoka Triennial, and which may have been more localized. Let me also outline the back end, the mechanism which enables the website to run. The same horizontal ideology is built into the mechanism on the internal structure as well. First, at the level of the overseas researcher with the head office, Previously, the researcher would send physical hard drives to Hong Kong office, 
for it to be uploaded onto the back end. Information on the records were emailed on an Excel sheet and manually typed in by the librarian. With the new system, the researcher, anywhere in the world, can digitize and upload directly onto the back end and leave remarks, notes, details, and annotations in pre-designed data fields, which they can choose to be visible for the public or only for the librarian. This has created a dynamic environment of discussion and dialogue where ideas or information can be exchanged immediately between the overseas researchers and the team in Hong Kong. As straightforward as, straightforward as this sounds, the archive conventionally is a top-down bureaucratic or legal exercise. The insertion of independent opinions and discussion into the mechanism of archiving minimi minimizes the possibility for dominant histories to overshadow alternative stories. By implementing multiple subjectivities into the process, into the, process the stronghold of bureaucracy is diluted. In a similar vein, we have also started to involve external annotators into the enrichment of data for each record. This function is also facilitated by the back-end system. This means that a single or clustered records can be enriched by scholars and experts outside of AA from anywhere in the world. For instance, Nora Taylor, professor of South and Southeast Asian Art at the School of Art Institute of Chicago, and a longtime advisor of AA, is currently helping us to contextualize the material of the now defunct organization, Blue Space, in Ho Chi Minh City, active in the 1990s. In a state-controlled art environment where artists were watched and monitored closely, Blue Space was part of a mushrooming of art, art organizations set up in Southeast Asia in the 1990s. They became a safe haven for artists and cultural critics to gather, practice, and exchange ideas. Nora Taylor is annotating a cluster of records identifying people and events, describing the political context of the time, and describing the conditions of the organization or the activities represented in the archival item. In juxtaposing the perspectives of the annotator, Nora, A's researcher, Janet Chen, and archive donor, Mrs. Tran T, the founder of the center, we hope to present a choral of plural voices. These are also the necessary tools for comparative methodologies, which we at AAA hope to enable for research, manifesting the complexity of contexts, conditions, and practices that are present, present in Asia. Thinking about words and vocabularies, we're in the early stage of a keywords project. Which, envis which envisions the standardization and implementation uh, of a set of controlled vocabularies suitable for the navigation of our co collection, generated out of the collection. This is an image of a work by Liu Fan and another by Kim Tae Ho. Rather than thinking minimalism, a European modernist term associated with the essentialization of form, now largely adopted to describe any mon monochromatic or geometric works, can we formalize the use of original terms like dan se kwa for monochromatic paintings in Korea from 1970 to present? This will also help to attribute to the distinct history and conceptual and critical aims out of which these practices transpired. It has been argued by critics and art historians that the primary concern of the process was not of form or of color, but of the process of repetition as a search for neutrality and transcendence. Through keywords and terminology, how can we help to make or question associations between, between Dan Sequa and categories like tradition, nation, contemporary, or find parallels with movements like Japan's monoha? One last thing I would like to mention about AA is that we know we cannot do this alone, which is probably why we are all here today. There's too much work uh, still to be done, too many stories still to be accounted for. One of AA's visions is to develop a federated search so that we can connect our collection with the collection at Indonesia Visual Art Archive and the two projects I will describe next, or possibly the modern and contemporary uh, collections of Asian Art Museum in San Francisco or at the School of Creative Media. But for now, while we are still far from this a goal, one of the ways we are trying to link up with initiatives around the world is through our directories page. It's ki kind of technologically modest at the moment, but rather than having a directory that acts as a yellow pages of the Asian, whatever that may mean, or art or archival organizations, we're trying to connect and map projects through shared conceptual interests, historiography, territorial concerns, memory making, performance, etc. 
so that when you see AAA, you see that it is one participant, one node in a, multi in a multitude of critical conversations and actions. And with this in mind, let me take a moment to look at the work of two projects, which I believe are very much in line with AA's work. Some of you in the room may know or may have come across the work of arg.org before. arg.org is an online platform for the sharing of texts within the discipline of humanities, philosophy, art, activism, economics, cultural studies, usually from the leftist position. Founder Sean Dockray explains that it has always been a positive project, an elaboration of love for the material being shared. It was a continuation of an already familiar type of activity photocopying pages of books and giving books to friends so we could talk about it later, or at least have shared understandings. As friends, friends of friends, started, use, started to use, copy, print, circulate the text, an increasingly widening network of acquaintances, peers, and colleagues also started to tap onto the forum and contribute their photocopies and thoughts. As one can imagine, the self-generation of texts comes with accumulated traces of its readers. Folded pages, underlines, erasures, coffee spills, tears. And these are the imprints of subjectivities being formed. Thoughts and arguments in the making. And these too become a part of the repository of writings or markings in arg.org, whether one likes it or not. That is the poetic human side of the project. At the same time, discussion groups, tagging systems, and reader-generated categories started forming organically on the site. The website is now a tool for almost every humanities student out there, not only as a resource, but as a space where new ideas are generated, debate, and shared. And new online and offline communities based on ideas and interests are created and fed back into the archive. Let me quickly also introduce the work of the Southern Conceptualisms Network, an archive network in Latin America whom I believe share many, many of A's visions. The initiative is set up in collaboration with Rena Sofia Museum in Madrid under the directorship of Manuel Borja Villal. Manuel's tactics to overturn the hierarchical, bureaucratic, and didactic position of the modern art museum, reimagining the museum not solely as owner, but merely as the custodian of goods which belong to all. He imagines a universal archive, an archive of archives, where opinions, commentaries, and judgments are shared Everyone can offer their own version of the story and can explain their perception of themselves and then of us. The universal archive, based on excess then, enables a choral history to be constructed. Since 2007, the museum has been collaborating with the Southern Conceptualisms Network, a collective set out to safeguard and recuperate archives and documentation of critical art of the 1960s to 1980s in Latin America. Firstly, from being privatized by galleries, museums, private owners, and universities, and relocated to Europe and North America. Secondly, to reactivate these practices by giving them agency to intervene into our present conditions. The activities of the network started with the Cartographies Project, which identified and inventoried the state of the archives and documentation of critical art from the 1950s till now uh, in, the, in South America. The team included nine researchers nine researchers from South America, and accounted for over 90 archives, institutional or individual, public or private. At the same time, they developed a chronology of key events in each country from 1950 onwards. These exercises highlighted the vulnerability of many of the archives and made visible the gaps where intervention was necessary. They then associated the archives with their local institutions, universities, libraries, or arts organization, to together develop proper preservation, digitization, and conservation policies with the, final, with the final aim of opening up the archives for public use. This action is intended to empower the local communities by decentralizing the production of knowledge and creating the conditions of microhistories to be written. The ideas generated out of the archive continue to exist via the networks activities, material from the archives are brought together and activated in the form of exhibitions, discussions, conferences, meetings, and research. Their current exhibition, Losing the Human Form, currently on show at Reina Sofia, suggests the effects of violence on bodies and the experiments in freedom and transformation under the repressive order of the 1980s in Latin America. And this brings together material and documentation of serigraphy, performance, video, 
poetic action, experimental theater, and participative architecture. Through these layers of experiences, the, cons the Southern Conceptualisms Network go beyond, go beyond thinking of the, of the material as historic evidence, but reactivate the critical potential of the movements and actions of artists and cultural critics of the 1960s to intervene in the production of our present subjectivities. In conclusion, ARG.org, Southern Conceptualisms Network, and AA have built in the multiple and subjective into their practice. ARG.org as a community where information and knowledge are self-generated, to Southern Conceptualisms Network, where network is methodology. At AAA, the multiple is, is designed into our operating structure. Of course, there are countless issues that we still have not nodded. What does it mean for the archive to be truly socialized? Is there a difference between multiple and miscellaneous? How do we avoid falling back on the canonization of individual voices? What happens to the original? For now, if you ask me, what is in the archive that is inciting people or organizations? What options or possibilities does the archive seem to promise? We at AA believe it is in its radical potential, the potential to re-envision and revise the way narratives and histories are told, the potential to reactivate, to give agency to the multiple, to dilute the dominant, to map out the intersections and movements of ideas to challenge the meaning of ownership, and most importantly for us, to challenge how and by whom knowledge is being produced. Archi archiving, I believe, is an act of creativity, imagination experimentation. So long as we're archiving, we keep envisioning. With the current opening up of the archive, we are intervening into the past, a past that is continuously being written, because the past is never dead. It's not even past. And this is the archive that we're envisioning today. Thank you. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the funding of the entire organizations? Um, yes. Uh, similar to the last uh, uh, Susan's response, we're funded on multiple platforms. Uh, we're funded partly by the government. Um, we have a fundraising dinner every year that supports us. Um, and a lot of the projects, the separate projects, some digitization, some of the public programs, those are independently funded by uh, grants or foundations that support, d depending on which project. Also in terms of sustainability, we are building an endowment fund because we know that this should not be preserved for the next five years, but 20, 50, 100 years. So we're putting together a lump sum which we secure in the bank, which becomes an umbrella for the future. Over there? Yes. Uh, I'm uh, the chairman of the Hong Kong's uh, Archive Action Group. You know that in Hong Kong, government records are not subject to statutory law. And we've been pushing for the last four years to push the government to enact archives legislation. How do you envisage with the work you are doing, which is superb, and yet, on the historic document side, there is nothing being done, and we are not getting the help we need from either the Hong Kong society or from the cultural world as a whole. Um, Padma, is a, Padma is an organization that's an online community, um, and they do a lot of uh, self-generated archival projects and they have 10 theses to uh, how to or to the archive one of them is don't wait for the archive I think a lot of what we do are is simply to respond by action um, I think if you wait for other people to give you an answer it might never come I don't want to you know <laughs> diminish the <laughs> the Hong Kong government but I think that to take action first is probably the best thing you can do and what action can we take <laughs> I mean if you you start building an archive of your own work or whatever organization it is that... But we can't get hold of the government archives, the government records to build archives. <laughs> okay, in solidarity. <laughs> okay, in view of the... Yeah. Okay, one question, yeah. Uh, very quickly, I, I was very much interested in the multiplicity of, of voices and all that, 
But I was curious whether your web strategy includes any opportunity for crowdsourcing information to, to add to your collection knowledge, sorting, metadata, whatever. Um, one of the uh, examples that I gave the external annotators is a first step to doing that. Um, another project which I didn't mention is the um, Comparative Contemporaries, and it's actually an anthologies project. Uh, where we have five editors and each editor chooses 10 important historical texts or art historical texts from Southeast Asia. And all of this is being put online. They're being translated as well to other uh, Southeast Asian languages, but also to English. And this becomes a blogging forum where other people contribute more texts. And this is also an uncovering and recuperating of a heritage, a rich heritage of writing. Um, I think these are experimental platforms that we're trying to see how we can engage the public in a serious way and a way of exchange. Okay, thank you very much.